I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in for days. Done the whole freaking argument. Welcome to the first ever official episode of the Tug of War podcast, Narcos Coffee podcast, featuring my first ever special guest, original DJ Memzi in the building. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, blah, blah, blah. big up, my brother, big up. Right. Big up everyone on Instagram Live. Big up everybody on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. This is my first ever podcast. It's the first week. It's going to be a weekly podcast. I'm going to be inviting different guests every week. We're going to be talking about loads of different topics in the industry. We're going to be talking about topics and issues that are going on right now in the world. You get a chance, you guys, to ask me questions. Also, my guests get a chance to ask me questions. And I have to say, this show is proudly and officially sponsored by none other than Mama Big love, give thanks to Mama War. Big sponsored shout out this to, show. Big shouts out to Mama War that these biscuits are banging. The right difference now. is with this show is that we don't only have a podcast, we have coffee, narcos coffee. This is the finest Colombian coffee in the world. We also have Mama War's homemade biscuits. And we also got, look at this, we've got like tea bread. This is actually called Spotted Dog. You get me? A bad man on yam spotted dick. <laughs> That's for a dog. So yeah. So welcome to the first episode of Narcos Coffee Podcast. Memzi, cheers. Cheers. Oh, these are nice, man. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Memzi, you, you're not a weed smoker, are you? Um, no. No. So that's why Memzi won't be smoking any weed today. No weed for Memzi. No. no weed for Memzi. It's all good. It leaves more weed for me. We got everyone on the Instagram live right now. So, original DJ Memzi, how you feeling, my brother, man? Tell me, what's going on? Happy New Year, fellas. Happy New Year, my G, man. Happy New Year. So, what brought this idea together? <coughs> what brought the idea together? This whole tea, coffee, well, it's, it's been, well, biscuits, broadcast. Tell them why you're doing it for. I've been wanting to do a podcast for a long time. For a long time, to be honest with you. I never had the right kind of setup, And I was busy doing a whole heap of other things at the moment. Because I just finished... Recording my triple album and everything. I thought, now, nah, Bandino, that's alright without the light? Alright. So, because I just um, finished recording my triple album, I thought it's a good time now for me to. I wanted to show the people a bit of my personality. Okay. You see, everyone here is Tug of War on records. Everyone sees me in the videos. People know me for many years. A lot of people know me for different reasons. Tug of War's a legend. Ask Memzi. You get me? People should know this. But I wanted people to actually get to know a bit of my personality. You know, and I wanted to um, have some real topics and real discussions. Because what I found, as you know, I've been a studio owner. I've owned my studio for many years, right? By the way, we're broadcasting live from Tug Movement Studio. So as a studio owner, in studios as artists, we mix with people like yourself, DJs, other artists, producers, promoters, dancers, whoever it may be. And... I always found that we always end up having good conversations. We always end up talking loads of conversations, you know? So it was like, okay. It was like, it was, every time someone come to my house, it was like a podcast. You know, even yourself, you'd come down and sit down with me. And the way we're talking, these moments need to be captured on camera to actually let the people then see and understand see, a bit more. Yeah, because I think we have a lot of good conversations sometimes that are overlooked and overseen and people don't really get to see. True. You know, so I wanted to use this as a platform for people to see the realness. And I see podcasts is something nowadays a lot of people are doing. Everyone's doing podcasts on different types of platforms, talking about different issues. And I wanted to get into that as well and express how I'm feeling about subjects and the people can get to know a bit more about me. And I just want to say thank you yeah. for inviting me mm. to be the first to kick off the whole platform for mm -hmm. you're welcome thank you you're welcome you're welcome no, respect no, no, no. you know like you you first came to mind because no, you're no. i've known you for many years no, no, and you're no. a celebrity in I'm this i'm not a celebrity you no. are you're a celebrity you are version of dj khaled man you're, no, the, you're no. the english no. dj khaled <laughs> man. this is the original no. dj memzi people no. man he's dj does a lot for the memzi does a lot for the industry you do a lot for the artists them you promote uk music a lot oh you're, you're you're a strong supporter of uk music 
and um, you're, you're always keeping modern affairs, you're always keeping up to what's going on in the industry and whatever. So I thought I used that. I like your, you network, you're a good networker. Thank you. You're a very good networker and I thought you'd be a good guy to bring up here and share some views with and stuff like that and get your opinion about stuff and also people can get a side to see where me and you actually right. sit down and reason. Not like when I come up to your show, this is not Mystic. No. This is a whole different platform where we they can see something different from Memzi and Tuggle. Oh, you get me? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> You're welcome. Also, look, I just want to say this coffee is banging. Mm, I have some coffee today. Have you tried some biscuits yet? I want you the to biscuits. taste some biscuits. I've had one, I've had one. Huh? I'm banging. I'm not you like try one the one biscuit, there. try one of them. And that, one question I want to ask you, just, yeah. you just kind of elaborated on saying, you know, I'm the UK DJ Khaled. What do you mean by that? Because a lot of people have started to say that. But why? Why? What do you mean? Like, I'm not... DJ Khaled is who he is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm original Memzy. I, I I just do me. I don't watch what DJ Kelly does. But no. I want you to from for you to open your mouth and say that. What mm. do you mean by that? Well, you're the, you're you're. I mean DJ Kelly. Everyone's their own person. I ain't gonna compare you to yeah. DJ Kelly. DJ Kelly yeah. is in DJ Kelly is DJ Kelly. The original Memzy yeah. is original Memzy. It's more of a banter. I think you're you're both similar sizes. So I think you got that bit of weight on you, like Khaled. You got that little, like Khaled, Khaled's always got that bubbly thing about you, like, hey. I, 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 will, I will do what TJ Khaled's doing. I won't go Weight Watchers and all that stuff. No, no. Man's a love, I'm, uh, I'm a married man. I'm Turkish shit. Tell me about married life. Man's married life. Like, we're talking about DJ Khaled now. <laughs> <laughs> this whole, you know, like, I, I respect, like, a lot of people that, you know, kind of say, mm. you know, I'm, I'm like the UK DJ can, but I want you like because the relationship that I've got with you and what we've been through and what we've done, I want you. I want to hear it from you. What that for you to say that? Why did you say that? It's a joke. No, it is because I respect you as yourself. Yeah, I respect you as Memzi. And I don't need to. It's like trying to compare me to another artist. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's only a. It's, it, no, no, no. But, but I think down to the support. Okay. Like. You, 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 you always contacted me as a time wanting to jump on this record. Like, okay. and that's the sort of stuff Khaled does. Mm -hmm. Khaled would holler at artists and try to put a, a project together. Yeah. And I've seen you do that many times over here with the similar type of energy, you know, that similar type of format. And I'll say, okay, like, so it's like, not many DJs have done that. There's only a handful of DJs that have actually reached out to artists. See, that, that's one thing I have to um, applaud you for, really, because... <coughs> not many DJs re reach out to artists. Not many DJs okay, reach out why, to why artists. Why do you think that is? I think it's selfish. Selfishness. Okay. Selfishness. I think a lot of DJs are selfish, especially this day and age. The new era DJ, sorry to say, that it's all about them rather than even appreciating artists. You know, where I think, where, where I kind of appreciate, like yourself, you, you, more, like, you go to see the local talent. Yeah. You support the local talent, like myself and many, many others. Yeah. Where other DJs just want to play the top five records, the top 20 records, top 50. You know? Like, okay. So I appreciate DJs that support artists. You've always supported artists. You've always hollered at artists. I see you up to today, you're still doing projects, right? Where you're involving different artists in the projects. Mm. That's great. Continue that. I applaud Thank that. You. Yeah, Thank that's you. great. And I think, and I even just even mentioning you alongside Kali's name is a... Uh, um, is a big up. I'm bigging you up in that. You know what I mean? It's like I think you stick to what you're doing. That's why I wanted to invite you up here because you're a great supporter of artists as DJs. Not every DJ I could invite up here and get that honest opinion from. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? You and know what I mean? That means a lot. To no, you. It, no. You, you're a man. You you look out for artists' tunes and you play them. You got a UK show. You don't play American music. You don't play any other genre of music. Just UK music, right? Yeah. That's great. That's great. I support that. Would love to. Like. Elaborating on, what <coughs> you, elaborating on what you just said as well. Mm. Name me, let, let, apart from my show, yeah. name me another show yeah. on the radio yeah. playing four hours of mm. UK music. Like, we're talking about global, we're talking about national, we're talking about... Four hours. Four, name me one DJ or mm. one presenter on another station that plays four hours. Four hours, hours. man, that's four hours. Mm. I don't know. 
I never, I don't know. And I mean, Charlie Sloth, how many hours does he do? He he does. I don't. I think he does three, four hours. Charlie does about three, four well, hours. He doesn't play all UK music. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. That's true. That's true. He doesn't. I don't actually know another DJ that plays four hours of straight UK music. I have to pick up DJ Piddy because DJ Piddy sometimes plays four hours of tug of war. <laughs> That's a tug of war show. That's yeah, a tug of war show. Which is UK based. No, no, no. You know what? Like four hours of UK music, and your UK music is not the sort of UK music you play. Is not the typical top twenty. You support records that are good records, and maybe haven't got the great platform, great promotion behind them. Maybe not the biggest biggest budget videos behind them, but good projects that you will identify in the UK and support that. That's really good. Thank you. That's good, I like that. I like and that. you know what, like, I think when it comes to the music as well, Yeah. like I started as a DJ with nothing. Right. Like no fan base, yeah. no, no records. I used to save my university money, college money, go into my local record shop and wow. buy, buy records and records. Nothing was given to me. Yeah. Everything that I've achieved, I've done it, and you can you can back me. This is all everything that you've wanted to do as an artist, and how you wanted to represent yourself as an artist. No one said to you, "But like, you're gonna be tug of war. You're gonna do the surf. You're gonna come out with platinum albums. You're gonna do, you know, you work like your work rate as an artist as well. Yeah, is phenomenal. Thank you. Musically. Lyrically, um, great personality as well, great, great attitude, not scared to talk about how you feel, yeah. and I respect this, this is another avenue for you to promote your music Definitely. with different genres of aspects <coughs> of people in the music industry. Mm. Like, your work great T, like, you're a monster. I think you, from the people that I've met in my journey in the last, say, five years, yourself, D Dark and um, who else is a monster? There's a guy called Mumsy Stranger okay. and um, Hamza Production who right. is now officially the face of YouTube. Right. Like their work rate, they believe in themselves, they believe yeah. in what they're trying to achieve and what they want to achieve. And yeah. like, you know, it might not happen. Overnight, no, as you know, nothing happens overnight. Like nothing happens overnight, but <laughs> one day that door is gonna knock, and that door is gonna open. But you haven't knocked on that door. They've knocked on your door to come through to that door because yep. they've recognised what the talent is mm -hmm. and what the talent has brought to mainstream or underground. That like, you don't need now. Like in your days, like for you to perform in one of the biggest dancehall lineups, yeah. One of the biggest platforms that most artists would love to be on, you performed that, wow. and you've come from like homegrown UK soil. Yeah. Like that, that deserves a round of applause in its own right. Like you performed that stink. Like I've seen Let's give Tugawa a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> like and and and, you, and the way your name Tugbolt <coughs> yeah. to come into Tug of War. Now you know about the Tugbolt and Tugboat. Bro, man, man knows yeah. about this UK thing. You yeah, know, yeah, I know yeah, about yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Respect, 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 respect. It means a lot. I mean, it's, that means a lot to me because. But you've done. Let's allow you. I no, work no, extremely hard. No, no one's giving you that. Yeah. Like go to the Jamaica and. You know, go and perform with like yeah. Vast Cartel and yeah. bro, you've done things that not even Jamaican artists have done. Very true. And you come from this is home, this is the UK, so mm. you know, well done bro. Respect, thank you, thank you. Like even with me, like I've DJed in places, I've mm. been to places, like I've got no agent behind me. Mm. It's no, all, no, 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 I've got yeah. no one behind me saying, <coughs> Menzi, you've got a book in here, Menzi, you've got a book in there, Menzi, you've got a book in there, or, yeah. you know, you're doing this and you're doing that, like, it's all me. Yeah. Like, no, I hear you. Like, even it's been the same with me all the way. All it's the way. been independent all the time. 
even down to my first record deal, the company couldn't believe I did everything what I did by myself. Down to the videos was popping on the television, everything I did, everything off my own back. And the whole, the Jamaica thing was a path. My whole, my whole career has yeah. been a crazy path for me. A long path, a long, long, long and, path, and even, a long even, struggle. Even, even, like, even for what you do as mm. an artist, mm. Like, it's it's credible, it's credible. Your work rate and musically as well, like you can shut down festivals. You've got so much energy, your stage presence, and you've got. I know for a fact, if I pick a record of any of your albums, you can perform that live. Yeah, you'll know it word to word. Yeah, yeah. like some people. Not remember this one. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, well, it's, it's my job. I've always, I've always made it a priority to stay on top of my game. If the minute I'm not on top of my game is the minute I'm slacking, and and that means I'm not doing my job properly. Because this to me is a, it's it's always been it's been a career for me since 2002. So like it's it's, it's many years of. You like the coffee, right? This is bad. <laughs> yeah. Narcos Coffee Podcast. I tell you, this coffee ain't normal, man. You need to check it out, man. This coffee ain't normal. We got one D, you know, in the building, you know. So, yeah. It's under, like, the, to be a dancehall artist and and start my career in Jamaica was a big thing to me. Massive. Because it, it's hard to do dancehall. No, I'm all right. I've got plenty of biscuits. You, what, are you scared to eat a whole biscuit? No, 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 it's nice. It's nice. You have a split biscuit. We've got, biscuit. Mama we got Mama War, it's plenty of biscuits. We've got chocolate ones as well, you know. <laughs> We've got chocolate cacao biscuits. We have the chocolate one as well, they're in Adino. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm glad that you appreciate the work. Because, like, just in the last two years, I think I've released, like, n- like, in the last year, I think I've released, like, nine projects. See, even that in mm. its own way, it's just. Solid projects as well, not no easy projects, like solid projects. How can people buy that music? How can they buy your music? Everything's on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music. What's the what's the biggest platform for you right now? Spotify. Yeah? Yeah, Spotify. How's, how, how can they find Well, people them? find themselves... That, that comes to a topic where I'm going to bring up in a minute. Mm. So, um, Spotify is a free way of streaming music, just like Apple Music and Tidal. I thought you got to pay for Spotify. You do, mm-hmm. but it's... It's a subscription. It's unlimited um, streaming. Okay. Not everyone has to pay for it. You can stream without paying as well. But I think you have to listen to the adverts. Listen to the adverts. No, pay for it. <laughs> You'll get more money. You get me? So I think like streaming and YouTube. So YouTube and Spotify would be like the main platforms, platforms for any artist at the moment because they're the most used sites or where people are listening to music from. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I'd like to get into the topics, members. We've got five topics with the Narcos Coffee Podcast. Every week we discuss five different topics. So, topic number one of the Narcos Coffee, episode number one, is Michael Dapper, his rise to fame, and other artists struggling to find plays or even get their record played. Now, he rise to fame as a comedian. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Michael Dapper on all his success in the last year. I think he's done really uh, well as a comedian and what he's done with his record and taken the whole American industry by storm. At the same time, um, there's a lot of artists who, there's a lot of people saying, oh, Michael Dapper, he's, he's never been really an artist. You've got artists who've been recording in studios for so long and then someone comes out and always as a comedian and gets a hit. What's your opinion about it? About the whole thing? <clears throat> Michael Dapper. Yeah, yeah, like this, you know. <coughs> Let's keep back, boom! Put it back, back, back! Relevant mm. overnight, mm. getting signed yeah. to a major label, um, being able to be put in places that yeah. he's never dreamed of, live yeah. a life that 
he's never seen. So yeah. I applaud him yeah. for that. Right. Um, and for what he's achieved, for what he, the industry that he's in, yeah. It's well deserved. He's a he's a number. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you're a comedian. You're a I DJ. heard about him. I heard about him before yeah. his his record. Com- from from being a comedian mm. to being an artist, a DJ, a singer, a, a policeman. A, yeah, I saw the policeman and the, the traffic warden yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you are <coughs> in life. He's 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 hustle. Done entertainment out of it. He's entertainment. Yeah, definitely. And. To be recognised for what he's doing, yeah, is a beautiful thing. But to the question, um, you put as a topic, yeah. Artists, like you said, like artists are finding it very, very hard to get themselves heard on any, any platform, any not even platform on radio. Right? Yeah, it's very, very hard. Yeah, because most radio stations they're all top twenties. Yeah. Yeah. Top 20 records that's currently doing well online or record labels have invested into them to kind of... And how do they actually way. gauge these records? Is they just pick the records that are popping the most on you? How does it work now? Is it sales? Is it YouTube plays? You know, you know what? I, I think the way people are getting recognised now is all through music videos. Which means the visuals. It's the visuals. Mm. It's like you can, you can go into a studio, you can make a great record. Yeah. Then after you've got that great record, you play that record to whoever, you know, is following you. Yeah. But you want, like, you, like you, you should know, like you're an artist yourself. Like every time you make a record, you want a put, you want to put visuals to it. Yeah. So people can see and hear what you're trying to express. Yeah. Off what you're trying to write. So you, like, for YouTube, YouTube has made them break. Yeah people's careers and it's made Michael Dapper's career become very very current yeah like my little daughter she's not even two years old she's and, singing and the song she's not singing the song she but really, she, she she knows she knows the song, the song. yeah and that's powerful yeah like, very. As, as an artist if you can make a record and you can get kids like my little nephews on Christmas Day. I kind of they perform the whole song <coughs> from ad libs wow. to sounds to the whole. That's a hit record. It's a hit record. 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 I mean, it's a hit record. I mean, you can't. I mean, people can say what they want. It's my opinion. People can say what they want about when the record goes number one. It's always criticized. It, it's always the most always. played record. People always get sick of it. Oh, I'm sick. The first thing someone says about a record. When it goes number one, after a while, is I'm sick of that record. What? Do you know why you're sick of the record? Mm-hmm. Because the records are hit yeah. and it not stop playing. And I may tell you, you know, that's why they're sick of the record because the record don't stop playing. Mm. Now that's a fucking hit record. I mean, at any artist in the world, me myself, any artist in the world, we all wish to have such a record. Mm-hmm. Now, I think a little bit of envy has come in with Michael Dapper and jealousy from other artists because they don't look at him as an artist, they look at him as a comedian. So, because they look at him as a comedian, they think, oh, he don't deserve to have a hit record. No, I don't agree with that. You go in the booth, if you deliver, I mean, I've been doing music for so long, but you can come out, there's no rules to go in the booth. Mr. Blobby with number one, you know. There you go. So if you have to fight Michael Dapper, you have to go fight Mr. Blobby. And then you have to go fight Crazy Frog. Those yeah? videos, those videos there. Like, you got like, this, it's not even the video, they were like the joke songs of the year. <laughs> no, 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 let's be real here. Skip it back, back, boom, boom, what's it called again? Billy Bing, Billy Bing. Man, man's not hot. Man's not cold. Man's not hot. Man's not hot. That's, it's a hit song. It's a hit song. So you can't bad mind a hit song. You get a joke song of the year. I, I'm responsible. You can't forget, I am responsible. For the song. For the, ah! Shake man! Now, in the year, I Drop Surf was the most, one of the most funny songs of the year. Because Crazy Frog dropped the year before Surf. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Crazy Frog dropped before Surf. 
Surf was the, the follow-up for Crazy Frog in the dancehall world. In the dance what, what rhythm was that again? It was called the white power. That's white power. Yeah, the white power rhythm. Wipeout. So I think like so that was a kind of a corny song and with and did very really well. It was like number one reggae song on reggae hits and everything. But it's a song, man. It's a fucking song. Anyone that can go in the booth and record something that's catchy, I don't think other artists should get envious of it. It's just the industry, and you can't. I have to salute Michael. That I, I'm, I'm not saying. I, I think that. It's, will he do it again? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. But it is but, what it is. But everyone's. You know what? I'm not. <coughs> all I'm just gonna say is congratulations to Michael Dapper for. Yeah. Congratulations, doing, Michael. Doing, doing, doing what you do, yeah. and um, yeah, like well, Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, there's another. Yeah. Another record that you come out with, and mm. hopefully you get the same support as well. And mm. Just congratulations, all the best. Absolutely. Just be an artist. Yeah. Be a comedian. Do your thing. No, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just this UK music, and yeah. it's pr- and, and, and when it comes to the music as well, yeah. it's, it's UK homegrown talent. Salute Michael Dapper. I think like every artist just keep keep on working. I think everyone's part. You know, I saw what pissed me off the other day. What's that? It really pissed me off. You know, what I saw when New Year's when it turned two thousand eighteen, not too long ago. I see little memes of Cardi B. You know Cardi B, right? And Michael Dapper. And the memes was I want two thousand and eighteen to treat me like two thousand and seventeen treated Cardi B and Michael Dapper. Nah. Man. I hate that shit. I hate that shit. Everyone's path is different. Mm-hmm. You know, don't wish for another... I, what my point is, don't wish for another man's success. That's his path. Don't want to be Michael Dapper. Mm-hmm. Don't want to be Cardi B. Mm-hmm. Want to be you. Be yourself. That's what... So, and I see a few people posting it like, don't wish for fucking health and happiness. Wish for health and prosperity and your family and good luck and stuff like that. Don't wish for another man's success or another woman's success. People, wish for greater things in life. You know, don't run down in materialism. This, this, this is, you know, Michael Dapper's path is Michael Dapper's path. He's been working very hard, I understand, as a comedian, like what you said. I've seen the guy a long time before, man, was not hot. Yeah. On some very entertaining... YouTube videos, yeah. and I see him with loads of views on there, and he was doing his thing. That's hard work. That's dedication. That's hard work. It's not easy. It's the same thing what I do. We get up, we record. But it's a, it's all the entertainment business. We're all in the same business. So if a comedian can, yes, a comedian can get a hit record and do well. Yes, number one. Good luck to you. Don't ever wish to be Michael Dapper. Don't ever wish to be Cardi B. Wish to be you and wish for health and happiness. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? I think that's where the whole, the whole um, jealousy comes in. People just jealous. People just like, oh, he, he, he got number... Because they say he wasn't an artist and he got a number one. Do you know how hard he's working? For how long? But his path was to get a number one with Man's Not Art. Good yeah. luck to him. You, you've been working hard for many years. You might get an opportunity that you never expected tomorrow. And everyone's going to say, oh, how many did you get that opportunity? But you've been working hard just because you got an opportunity with something a bit slightly different. To what he was as a comedian, he turned into an artist with a hit record. Yeah. Within zero to a hundred, real quick. Yeah. That's his path. Mm. Don't bad mind the man's path. True. Got suck on the mama with a McDonald's straw. I hold him around quick. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we can move on now, and we're going to go to topic number two. Topic number two is one of the most disgraceful things. Or is actually the most disgraceful thing I've seen on the internet this year for 2018. It was very disturbing. It's, um, topic number two is the H&M situation with the young boy wearing the coolest monkey in the jungle t-shirt, Ooh. jumper, hoodie, whatever it was. And um, it's been really disgraceful. I can't fucking believe it. That how such a big corporation like H&M has allowed something like that to even... Without it going through, so without getting approved. Who approved it? Who designed it? Who allowed it to go out? 
Then further to the fact the mother now has come forward saying um, she's cool with it. She got paid for it, which I think is another total disgrace. P. Diddy's got involved now, apparently, and wants to give the, the kid... Um, no, it's been finalised. Is, is it, is it been finalised? Okay, so P. Diddy's give the guy a million pound... Yeah, um, fashion... Modelling, modeling, modelling contract yeah. with Sean John. Yeah. Yeah. What's your views on this topic this week, Mr. Mason? <coughs> I, I personally... Mm. Because I've seen, I've been, I've been in the fashion industry. I've been, I've seen how fashion shows and fashion week work and stuff. And yeah. Maybe, maybe it probably happens when they were doing a photo shoot or something. They had their kids because there was a white kid, yeah. there was a black kid, there was all nationalities. Um, at the photo shoot. At the photo shoot and. Maybe in my perception, like this is my thought on it. I don't think H and M personally deliberately done what they've done. I don't think they put a black kid with a jumper or hoodie stating that. I think they must have made a mistake. Someone's like, made. I, th a I think someone at the photo shoot they might have just said to the kids like, you know, you know, they're trying to get them ready and stuff, and they said like, you're next, and like, yeah, wear that, and you just put it on and. I he probably he, the kid probably didn't even notice what he was wearing. Well, like, the kid the kid's not gonna notice. He's too young. But I mean, there's too many adults in the room to but, allow that. But, but, but it's true what you just said. Like, and do you think before, such a t-shirt should be designed ooh. for in the fact like forget the fact of the kids and the photo shoot, the whole designing. So you say you don't blame H and M. I have to disagree with you because H and M obviously no, approved no, this not, design. No, that's 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 that was my fault of how. It happened, but from what you just said regarding, you know, when pictures like big, massive promo pictures go out mm. promoting a brand, it's like night wouldn't, you know, if they want like you or say like you're an artist or you're a tennis player or a football player, like for night to give you that hat and to sponsor you to, for you to wear that. Yeah, hat, but it's the context of what. Exactly, we're doing. but before it comes out, like mm. you said, it needs to be approved. Definitely. So who? Someone messed up big. <coughs> I think more than one person. Big that. time. I think the mother, the mother, has to be blamed for allowing her a son. Child wearing that. Because she signed the forms and received the money because yeah. she, the son can't be doing it without because he's underage. So I think she's. She said that he was modelling loads of t-shirts, but you have to see what your son's modelling and which ones are actually going to be get released, and how you, that one ended up on the child. I don't know. And how that one, if he did, if because she said he modelled loads of t-shirts. Yeah. Well, where's the other t-shirts? Because we've only seen this one. Yeah, true. Because, like, you understand what I'm saying? It looks, it looks too much behind it. But in a way, yeah. in a way, as much as it's... And then, uh, is the mum, is the designer, is the approval, is the person who really... I think it's a whole team of people, by the looks of it. Can't, it's not just one person to be blamed here. I think, I think maybe, maybe it might have been an advertisement, publicity way to get recognised. That would be horrible. It, 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 you know what, that... Because, but in, the, in, in, let's be real, like, in today's society... It's horrible. If someone wants to... If be, I mean, if it comes... That them, needs to be exposed. If that's the case... If hey, it's, it's like, for example, Big Brother... You right can't now. be using... Like, see, like, like, people like, are like, fucked up, man. And there has to be a line. There has to be a line drawn to the level of fuckery you're going to do to market your shit. I like me as a Dino. There has to be a line drawn. Because if you're going to use fucking racism as a marketing plan, I think that, that that should even be a crime. Do you know what I mean? That should not be allowed. So if that is a possibility, that's that to me, that is something that should be looked into. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that's like... Psychology, that's like deep psychology, psychologically racist issues to promote and market a brand. Psychological racism. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's fucked yes. up. That needs to be, if that is going on, which is a possibility, that's going on. I mean, with corporate companies like H&M. That's a big issue in society. I mean, we will need to... I mean, I would dread to think... I, I, I wouldn't even... I dread to think that's going on. 
Because that would start making me look at a lot of companies a lot of different ways. It's true. It's you know, true. I wouldn't like to think that's going on, but because I don't, I think there has to be a line drawn that you can't be using shit like that to market your shit. H and M, me like fix example. Fix up. H and M, Gasaki Amada, you made a big mistake. <laughs> I will never be shopping in your store again or wearing any of your garments ever again. And any of my family either will not be spending any money with you. I think that's neat. There's a lot to be desired about. It's more than the picture. It's more than the kid. It's more than the mum. In this day and age for 2018... It's just wrong. It was just wrong. And did we need to start the year like that, H&M? No. Oh, fuck off, man. These are cunts. You know what I mean? Dirty fucking cunts. Seriously, that's my opinion. Horrible monster. Horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible. And, and it needs, we need further explanation, and if not, we need even looking into the possibilities what we're talking about. Okay, next topic. <coughs> topic number three is Bandino. Let yeah. me see the phone then. Uh, and get back to the topic then. Topic you have your tea? I'm gonna have my tea. We got everyone on Instagram live locked on. It's the Narcos Coffee Podcast, episode number one. My name is Targi. Targi done no frigging argument. My first special guest for the first ever series, our original DJ Memzi. And we're going through the topics now. Every week we do five topics. Sponsored officially by Mama Wars Biscuits and Mama Wars Cakes. Narcos Coffee, the best coffee out of Colombia. We got the best tea in the world as well. Look at the tea, look on the tea good. Bad man, no squeeze man, bag of man in time. Look on the tea very good. Okay, let says keep calm and drink tea, yeah? And we got the Cravendale Milk. <laughs> Huh? The screen. The screen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Craving Dill milk and brown sugar. Brown sugar! Brown sugar. Bad man no drink white sugar. Bad man no yam white sugar. Brown sugar. Wow. Natural sugar. Okay. So. I'm going to have another biscuit. You have as many biscuits as you want. We've got you back of biscuits. You know, Do you want to get the chocolate ones? No, I'm going to try. Where's the chocolate ones? Try. I've got them in there. I'm going to try. Ones. I'm going to try some. But there's some cacao ones as well. Pure cacao. This is pink. There's no chocolate this, well, that, That's called spotted dog. No chocolate one in there. Try the spotted dog. That's spotted dog. Mm. What do you reckon of that? There's no chocolate one in there. Dino, you know, you know where them there? They're in the kitchen. It's alright. Yeah, it's alright. It's alright. It's alright. Yeah, it's all right. yeah right. you know our chocolate one. We'll no. soon go for the chocolate one. Next year we have the chocolate one. Yeah, next year we have the chocolate one. The <laughs> lemon. These are lemon. Lemon yeah. shortbread biscuits. <laughs> Keep calm and drink tea. Oh, that. That's spotted dog. That's an Irish um, recipe. Fine. Isn't nice? Fine. Talk about it. Hmm? Don't talk with your mouth full. Digest the food. Good. <laughs> Flavouring. Mm. Very cinnamon. Cinnamon. You said cinnamon. All right. I'm going to question if there's cinnamon in there. You said cinnamon. Mama, what is there cinnamon in the cake? There's nice cinnamon. Nice cinnamon. Ra raisins. Raisins. Um, what else can I taste? What else you got? Um, it's nice. I think it's got a lot of... I can taste the brown sugar as well. You can taste the brown sugar. Yeah. Wow, you can taste the brown sugar. Mm. Wicked. Right. Nice, yeah? I'm glad you like it. We're bringing up different cakes, different biscuits every week. Right, so. Unlock that one there. Topic number three of episode number one. Narcos, coffee, podcast, live and direct. I'm missing. Nyang. We got one Dina in the building. Right, Mr. Memzi. Does radio matter for artists when social media sites like YouTube are so relevant and they can basically do their thing without even... Like, once upon a time, I remember having to press records mm. to even get played. You couldn't even get it my CD. Remember before mm. CD, Dino? Mm. But my first <coughs> songs were out on record. My first releases come out on Seven record. Inch. Seven Inch. That's, that's, that's right, deep, man. And 12 inches as well. Mm. But like, we had 12 inches and 7 inches. The dark souls were the 7 inches, yeah. And to even get played in the clubs or radio, if you didn't have a record, mm -hmm. which meant mastering your whole thing, and going to, um, it meant mastering your whole, your whole thing, pressing it up at the plants, and everything like that. And then actually going and distributing it to the radio DJs. Mm. So it was a big process just to even get played, Dino. Mm. 
You know what I mean? You had to go to Music House. We got Music House. You had to go to Music House and press up the record and then give it to DJs like yourself to play. Times changed. We move on to CDs. <laughs> it made it a lot easier. We didn't have to press records no more. Records slowly started dying out. Everyone's playing CDs. Mm. Times changed again. Mm. CDs went out the window. USB. MP3. MP3. MP3's coming. Sorato. That's it. Game changer. If no one goes record shops no more, mm -mm. everyone downloads the MP3 for free. Mm. I don't think even people are paying for music That's like that, like that anymore. So. The whole game thing has changed now. Even with the DJs and playing the stuff on the radio, how unnecessary is it for the artists? Like, what's your view on this topic, like, with the DJs and how the game's changed? And artists can really rely on YouTube without even giving a song. Artists don't even give songs to DJs, though. Some of them don't even get a song. I haven't. I bet your eye. Right, right, let me ask you another question, which comes with this topic. You got an email, right? I bet your emails have slowed down over the years. The amount of artists you send you songs. Nah. They help. Right, I'm glad to hear that still. But what's your view on the topic? <coughs> Do artists need mm. radio support mm. more than online presence on social networks? You say? No. How important is the DJ? Does the artist even need the DJ? And how important is the DJ to the artist when they got social sites like right. YouTube? Answer to your question. Yeah. You're an artist. Yeah. You've got SoundCloud. Yeah. You've got Spotify. All of them. YouTube. Yeah. iTunes. You've got everything. Yeah. How important does it? How how important is it for you? Yeah. To get heard on radio. Is it important for you to be heard on the radio nationally and community and underground? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I would still. What my, I still send out my tunes, I've still got mailing lists, and like, it is very important. My, I come from that school of radio. busting my songs. A lot of my songs became famous on the radio. Surf bus on the radio before we did the video. Even though Channel U bust the video, it, that tune went, hit that tune hit in the clubs and the radio before we even done the video. Hence the reason why I did the video. So it's like. I, I, my format's always been getting the reaction from the DJs. I like the actual reaction from the DJs because DJs like yourself, you got on his ears, you know, and you say, oh, this is a good song, I'm going to push it. And something, and it starts, where another DJ might not hear that. Okay. But you, you know, not every DJ's got the same opinion on music. Sure. You know, so it, it, to me it's for opinion-wise as well. But having said that, since the day of visuals and YouTube and that, I don't feel I need you guys to make my song popular. Where I can, if I do, I can, I can just have my video popping on the social networks and my song will pop and then you guys end up calling me for the song. So, you're not answering my question. Do you need, do you need as an artist, radio play? I believe every artist should need radio play. Mm. Yeah. But my point is how, to the new artists, I'm different, men, because I come from that school of, hence the reason I've got you up here. I'm, I respect DJs. My path, I believe DJs is a part of it. With the new artists, and, 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 do you feel the new artists are needing the DJs? Like young artists who are coming up now, we just know their platform of putting their thing on Link Up, putting their thing on Grand Daily, and they're putting their videos on SBTV, they might go on even Charlie Sloth, but that's not getting airplay. That's how Michael Daffle blew. I know, but that Charlie Sloth show is not a radio show. That's a podcast yeah. with spitting. Because on, on his radio show, he's playing Beyonce and Jay-Z and them, man. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, he might play the song after when it gets famous, but I mean, that actual... His fire in the booth is not for radio. If it wasn't for the visual, it wouldn't be fire in the booth. Let's be real here. No disrespect to the show. Do you get what I'm saying? But like the whole aspect of Fire in the Booth is seeing the Fire in the Booth. People go on YouTube, it's got millions of views. Is The whole Fire in the Booth is popping on YouTube. People watch it millions and millions of times. Different artists are up there, right? Yeah. That's the platform, which is like a live podcast. More than a, a, a live freestyle. Okay. More than radio play. So that's the thing. So even... 
If you took these things away from the DJs, like how relevant would Sloth be without Fire in the Booth and doing these things for that? Yeah, I think I think social yeah. I think I think social networks <coughs> um, is today. It's the same in America. Yeah. Hot ninety seven Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. Them platforms there, they're the same sort of thing. They've got to visualise it to get the place because no one's really locking onto the FM no more. My point is, FM's not as listened to as once once upon a time. It's still there. Yeah. I'd say it's more effective in cars, and even in cars nowadays, people got so much new technology in the modern cars with your Bluetooth and things. FM is not as listened to as once upon a time. I like, do you know? Mm. You understand me, I say? So it's less, you get less FM listeners. They have the online listeners. Tune in radio. They're all the stations they on tune in, obviously. Now, I listen because I've got friends on there. I like, I, I, I grew up on radio station. I grew up on pirate radio station. I, I, I'm a whole fan of listening to juggling and DJs mixing. I'm a fan of that. So I listen purely because that's how I grew up and that's how I listen. But, having said that, how important is it for the fucking new artists? Are they appreciating it? Are they wanting to get their songs played? That's why I asked you, is your mail still coming in with songs? And if it is, is it young artists? Or is it... Do you understand what I'm saying? I'd like to know that. We... <coughs> to that question, mm. it makes me feel happy mm. as a as a UK supporter, yeah. playing and breaking new music. Yeah. And I can say I've been the DJ behind that artist's career. Absolutely, definitely. I've done it for DJ Ironic. Yeah. I've done it for Soundboy Entertainment. Yeah. You've done it for a few of my stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's that's not me. You was responsible, but that's not me. That, yeah, that you was. made that pop. You played it religiously. It popped. I think. I think. Me and Flamesy song. You 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 bust that, that, that madman. Mm -hmm. There's a. I think. One saying that mm. Fifty Cent has said has yeah. kind of made me realize how powerful radio is for an artist's career. Yeah. Fifty Cent. Stated, he goes, I make the music, yeah. but the DJ plays the music. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but. And he turned around and said, um, The fans or the public hear my music because of radio. Yeah. People that might not know of 50 Cent, yeah. but they've heard his song. Up in the club was the record that bust him. Yeah. It was up in the clubs. Yeah, but that, you're talking about 2003. I'm just saying that's a metaphor yeah. of what's happening. No, so. no, no. You see, I think, I think I've seen I, that I, 50 Cent interview. It's 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 been it's quite a while yeah. ago. It's quite a while ago. I think if you got 50 Cent's opinion on it now, it's not the same. Honestly, to be honest with you, because I've seen I've, I'm a fan of 50, and I keep up to date. And he, I've seen he, he, I don't think he's saying that right now. Because the game has changed to that extent, like, yeah. 50's had a couple of good songs in the, in the last few years that haven't popped on radio. There you go. Just off of the YouTube team, yeah. and just off of maybe then radio DJs ain't... I think, uh, what are DJs like? Because you're, you're an exception, Vince. Before you come... You're in, an exception. Sorry to come, come, in. come. You, be, The reason why I say you're an exception, because you play us. You give the tunes a chance. DJ, like, artists, and you, you're one of the few DJs that... I ain't worried about airplay because I get played all the other. But I see you support artists with no name. Like, forget me for a minute because tug of war is tug of war. But I see you support artists with no names, female artists, male artists, young guys, singers, rappers, that you believe in their record or you believe in the artist. Sometimes the record, I'll be honest with you, sometimes the record might not even be banging, but you've got a passion about how this artist is approach, approaching the business and you're willing to give it that push. I salute that. Thank you. I salute that. It's a rare breed. If we had more of you, artists will be more reluctant on DJs and that. But like, like what I said, you're an exception. What was you gonna say now before you cut me? Let me carry on with what you just saying. <coughs> like, there's an artist 
that nobody yeah. has heard of. Mm. His management team came to me and they said, Mendy, check your email. Yeah. The record is a guy, his name is T. Muller. Okay. And I'm just proud of him that um, I was kind of one of the first DJs to have a dub plate of the record. And discover was, the record. I was one of the first DJs to play him. I was one of the first DJs to bring him on radio. And now I see him. Mm. I see him on certain other DJs' platforms. Mm. that, And they're trying to say they were the first ones to kind of... Um, mm say that they kind of found him kind of thing and mm. I'm sitting there like, yeah well once, once the, the, the thing is once the artist comes everyone, everyone wants to be responsible exactly yeah mm. Everyone wants to, what's the highest part? Everyone wants to, yeah, I'm me bossing. Everyone rushed, rushed up. And then the real man that boss him is just quiet. Can you know what? Oh, God. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that, yeah? So I started, sorry, started playing this guy. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm proud of him to see him in meetings with Colombian Records, um, seeing him get 100,000 views. Excellent. And his music video. Excellent. And working hard. Yeah. And that's why this year I'm starting my own record label. About time. Congratulations. Can we have a round of applause for Bimsy starting his own record label? Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, that's, Bimsy. That's, that's, that's a good the look. reason why I want to start this independent yeah. record label where artists that I think have got potential to make it in yeah. the music industry, yeah. that's when I will be full control of their music, yeah. guidance and support. And being a radio DJ, being someone that's a club DJ, mm. and someone that's in the industry, and like you said, I've got an ear for music, I've got an ear for talent. Yeah. I want to be able to have meetings with record labels and say here's the package take this as the package take the artist as the package <coughs> take everything that what we've done take it and now push it out and get that little check that's your money that's my daughter's money and i just carry on doing what i'm doing i like how you, you got your daughter's money that's i like that i like that Come round applause for Benzie's daughter's money. I like it. I she like has it. to go to that Cambridge yeah. University. You know Benzie's I mean? out here looking that bag, man. You can't ramp with the man, man. He's out here looking for that bag. You get That's me? The one. You can't knock him. You get me? You can't knock the man with the hustle. Yeah, but the yeah. same thing. I the hustle, you know, Benzie. And a long time. You've like you've been producing records for a long time. You've been pushing artists. You've been like. Managing artists, I met you, you was managing various artists, like, I've seen you, but managed various artists, push their records to the max, videos, interviews, stage shows, like, you, you, like, you're not, you have got the whole package and you know the industry very well, I was, I've had this conversation with you before, this is another reason why I wanted to bring Memzy up here, because I had good music industry conversations with Memzy. Thank you, too. You know, and I wanted to capture this moment Thank you. for us to discuss these topics and stuff. And just to be natural, just here with the tea and the coffee and the vibes and the biscuits. And just be 100% natural. And this is like legacy. Thank you. Do you get what I'm saying? This is legacy, right? This is history in the making, right here, man. Narcos Coffee Podcast. We are ramping, man. <laughs> Them even bad like the slippers of me who's got shit in at the bar trim with. Mm. Our original DJ Memsy in the building. Mm. So, yeah. No, you know, that, that means a lot. Mm. Honestly, like, mm. that means a lot, man. Thank you, man. No, seriously, I mean it. I mean every word I say, my brother. Mm. But yeah, so I want to be able to sit at the mobile as much as you pay for your tables. I've been there with ITV and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Carry, carry on. Carry on talking to the people. Then. <laughs> carry on talking yeah, to the like people. Yeah, even, even like that, even with that situation there, it's all about being yeah. positive. Having that vision and doing what you really <coughs> want to achieve in life, and 
it's going to happen. This year is going to be a great year for me. I'm going to definitely... It feels kind of weird to sit in front of a camera and talking to myself, but that's what we do anyway on all social networks. Oh, he's back, he's back, he's back, he's back. But yeah, um, the whole platform team, I'm just going to go for it this year. Yeah, good, good. I'm going to go for it, man. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear that. You have to, remember me. You have to, because a long time you've been putting in that work there. Dino, you know, let's see um, now on there for me, please. You, you've been putting in that work there for a good way, you know? And I think... Like the whole, are uh, you going to be signing artists? How's it going to be going? Tell me. I want to be able to. I want to be able to yeah. have um, a situation where mm. there's a little, a little bit of money, mm. a couple of thousand pounds, to work on and develop the project, the music video, the the advertisement, whatever is needed for that project yeah. to have a little bit of money that doesn't, like the artist hasn't got. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to put the money towards yeah. advertisement, radio support, mm -hmm. radio PR, mm. um, photo shoots, mm. travel expenses, mm -hmm. um, production, studios, studio sessions, whatever it is, but I have to believe in the product yeah. of what, will you make me money? Yeah. Will I be able to sell your music? Will I be able to pr like promote you into the clubs? So the artist has to have like the X factor kind of thing Yeah. Like for me. And there's a lot of talent around me at the moment. And a lot of, I'm always getting hit up on Instagram, Memzy give me your feedback on this freestyle, Memzy give me your feedback on this and give my time for this and, and I try, mm. I try so hard to give my honest feedback on, on people's materials like mm. once a week before I do my show on a Saturday, like that's, it's my day, mm. like I work during the week. You know, I do what I gotta do, but on Saturday is my radio day. Mm -hmm. I, I take my music, I take what I do as a DJ, and I want to respect the music that is given to me. And I appreciate every single person that sends me an email. I take time to listen and and kind of appreciate and try and understand what they're trying to deliver. It could be an artist that sings. It could be an artist that kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, sings, raps, mm -hmm. whatever it is, I want to listen to what they're trying to get that message across. Mm -hmm. And some music that is, that's is sent to me, mm. they talk about the road life, mm. and they talk about things that they haven't got. And when you do the, you do the research, it's what I want to ask you as well, real talk. I like and talk and, and um, they talk about things that they haven't got. I mean, when you like, even with social networks, especially Instagram, that you know you can put a picture up of you know, of, of something yeah. that you want. Like behind every single picture, there's always yeah. a story. I'm glad you said that because you must receive a lot of music. Mm. And I think there's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot. There's a lot of bullshit out there. I think, like, the whole fact. I don't think it's bullshit. Yeah. I don't think it's bullshit. <coughs> I think people do what's fashion. Some of it is bullshit. Like, it's like Sway done that record called Flow Fashion. Sway's a good artist. So it's a good idea. Like people follow yeah. what's current. It's like this whole Afrobeat swing thing that's yeah. you know getting power played, like the J Husses, the Notes, yeah. the Kojo Funds, like they're all beefing over who started yeah. what kind of style of you know vibes yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's got to a point now what's whoever's created this sound, mm. people have been inspired by it and they're just delivering it a different a different way mm. of culture mm. and presence. It's like grime music. No, but what I'm trying to say is like, you see like, these, the music business nowadays, anybody can be an artist, you know? 100%. Anyone can be an artist. And I, um, I think sometimes people really need to tell their friends around them, you're no good. Like there's levels. And I think the, the level of, you see, 
Likewise, we'll be congratulated Michael Dapper. That song's a hit record. Yeah. It sounds like he can motherfucking chat even if he was taking this piss. His two past two is four. It's quick, simple maths. Simple maths. Everyday man's on the block. Smoking, Smoking trees. trees. <laughs> see your girl in the park. That girl was a That's decent, yeah, man. But you see, like, some guys ain't built for it. Yeah. He's a comedian, so he's built for the entertainment business. You need to know your path. Because some of these guys, they want to do comedy shit, but there's no talent. You know, just for the sake of the views. And, like, you're going to get... Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you're going to get all these views on Facebook for being an idiot and say you're put... It's bullshit. It's, it, like, it doesn't make no sense. I've even you yourself. you got to look into an artist to see, is he actually recording his songs well? Is his... Does he sound real? Like... Look, he's talking about this, Can and when you look into him... I'm saying this now, yeah. I'm saying this now. <coughs> Negativity yeah. on social media yeah. makes you famous. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Negativity yes. makes you famous mm. on social networks. Mm. So you can go on social networks, you can talk about whoever you want to talk about, and people will respond. When someone, when, to become when, famous. when someone has an accident on the streets of London, yes. people don't even give a hand. They, yeah. The first thing they do, they pull out their phones to record so they can get views on yeah. their social networks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Social media... Negativity spreads so negativity, fast. Ne yeah. Yeah, negativity makes... Which I suppose yeah. enables clowns to look negative attention to get attention, to call themselves famous, where even if you become, because there's a lot of like, even some of them women out there in America, they become famous off of negative attention or whatever. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being bad. But like, I'm not being bad. I think you. there's there's a total difference. What my point is, yeah. there's a total difference between becoming famous for being a fucking dickhead or having talent and being an artist, which you must struggle okay. with that. All right, let's put it line there. Right. Okay, look. I'm not. I'm not bad mouthing him. I'm not. I'm not gonna say horrible things about the guy. But mm. like, I'm a fan of what he does, and I find it funny yeah. what he does. There's a guy on um, Instagram. His name is Jack Jones TV, right? Okay. This guy, he, like you said, we were talking about the whole <coughs> hustle right. of being who you are mm. and enjoying what you do, right? Yeah. So there's this guy called Jack Jones TV. Yeah on Instagram, mm. on YouTube, mm. on Facebook, he's decided to make this his life. He goes around and okay. he does things that people want to kind of see. Yeah. So he would go into a supermarket and he would just violate the public and he would get a reaction from the public, the public. Yeah. and he will record that response right. like, like you're saying like this this is history in the making this is our moment and stuff yeah um but he does that consistently like his facebook his use views on instagram right. views on whatever he does and now he's turned that prank mm. and that stupidness mm -hmm. like it's like he will say you know you go into the toilet and you'll just say like, "Bro, you got a big dick and stuff." And like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. like, like he's stupid. Like it's stupidness. Yeah, he will go into like, into, like oh, central yeah, London. He got to go to certain places in um, um, central London where he's always based, and he just like takes people's hats. He will take policemen's hats and run away. He'll do things. It's like you know that um, program that um, they do mad things. What was it called? Um, and always getting injured and stuff. They were, they made a movie out of it as well. Um, I think I know it is. Jackass. Jackass. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Like it was an MTV. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's like, he's like a jackass. <coughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Because that was, see, that shit have been going a long time. We yeah. mentioned Jackass. It's been going a long time. That kind of stuff. Yeah. So what do you say about him? Like, him do, that's what him does. Like, like for example, that's what he does, isn't it? Yeah. And he's trying to. Uh, look, he's, he's become famous yeah. on the internet yeah. by doing negative things yeah. that's drawn people to like what he's doing. Right. So, but back to your question mm. regarding do artists need radio yeah. 
for their careers, mm -hmm. I'm saying yes. Because radio plays a big part mm -hmm. in in an artist's career. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would agree that. But what, I, what I'm thinking is that a lot of a lot of people might not think that with the new artists not really having such a um, great relationship with DJs and just solely relying on p Link Up TV and Grind Daily and their right, Facebook. Let me, let, me ask you, let me ask you this question then. I don't see the let new artists. Ask, let me ask you this question. Go, though, right? go for it. I mean, they, they love Charlie Sloth no, let me ask and, you this and the limelight and, let, the, and, the, me, and, and the platform. Let me ask you this question. I'm talking about DJs. Grand Daily. Yeah. Link Up TV. Yeah. SB TV. Yeah. They are the platform for the UK urban scene. The biggest. They're the top three. It's, there's no comparison. Everyone says Grand Daily is better. Link Up TV is better. SB TV is better. All I can say, them three platforms there are very, very powerful yeah. supporting black urban culture UK music. They mm. support everything. Mm -hmm. Most artists that go into the studio make a record. Mm. Like they said, they put up on their um, Spotify, they put it on mm. their SoundCloud, and they push it to, an, to a massive audience. Mm -hmm. Then they come out the studio, have got that record, they shoot a music video, and they will push that platform and their music to their audience. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you've got to pay money. Mm. Advertisement. To put your music video onto a platform that is it's, it's very, very powerful. And yeah. the minimum views for an unknown artist using those platforms, minimum 25, 30, maybe even if, you, if they like it, 40, thousand views in a week but the question that i'm asking you how often do you hear those records play the record the radio on, that's a good on, point on how, I, like, I like that's a good point all those forty thousand people right. that have seen who gets those played views, in the clubs and shit. all those artists yeah. that have got 40, yeah. 40 000 views mm. how many times of those tracks have been played on radio no maybe not so many and maybe not even the clubs either but that's because they're all on on the, on their phones so listening to, to your, YouTube. No, no, okay, we're talking about for what you said for the question. Mm -hmm. Do artists need radio? Yes. Yes, I believe that that don't change. I think I think, I think radio will be there forever, and artists will always need radio. Mm -hmm. I think because radio is not all the time you want to watch something. So I think radio's always it's it's been around from day one. It's been around from before TV. And it'll be around after TV because it's a listening thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's a listening thing. So I think it will always be a platform. But the reason why I mentioned it is because of the amount of different ways um, you can platform your music without. But I'm, I remember where it was only a DJ. Mm. And if a DJ didn't spin your record, you ain't going on with nothing. True. You know? And now. It's not just a DJ. They they can pop without getting a play from the DJ, having a hot record on Grand Daily, da, 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 whatever, getting there forty thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand in a week. And to them, it's cool. To me, I think it should be more than that. You need DJs. You need that. It's not just one platform. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wicked. So to your answer, <coughs> I love that radio, one. Radio, and I called you. Yeah. Radio. Um, radio <coughs> plays a very very big part. In, yeah. in an artist's career. Yeah. So, lock in every single Saturday, 4 to 8, Mystic Radio, live.net, 98.1 on the FM. Yeah. Every Saturday, 4 to 8, four hours of the finest unsigned and signed UK artists. I don't play no Drake, no 50 cents. I play people like Tug of War. Ah! Yes. So, lock on, support DJ Memzy every Saturday on Mystic. You see me? So, let's go to the next topic, Memzy. Does UK dance all hold weight? And if not, why? I'm talking about UK dance. Do you see it as a genre in the UK that holds weight? UK dance all. Not talking about dance all. UK dance all scene. You know what? It's going to be a very, very hard, hard answer. Yeah. Like being a UK DJ. Yeah. And I might sound like a hypocrite, but yeah. my my forte mm. 
um, it's not UK dance. Or no, dance. I know that. No, no. So I want. I just. I just like for that question. Yeah. Like for the UK scene and the dance hall scene, I think it's a very healthy place. But there's certain DJs in this scene, like Robber Ranks, DJ Quincy, like they support UK dance hall because I think as no, a you're wrong. I mean, they don't. They don't. Nah, we're talking about UK dance hall here. There's not like <laughs> they don't. They don't support UK <laughs> dance hall over here. This is the point, and and it doesn't right, hold right. weight because they don't support it. The DJs, they're quick to play a Mavado or Alkaline or something like that. But you see, if one Dino releases a good record, they then the old tug of war or Gappy Ranks or whoever, they ain't playing us so fast. Like, they, 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 we're harder to get to play. And we got name, but it's like the UK dancehall scene, I don't know what it is, especially like, I'm an exception, to be honest with you, because I've got so many hits. And, and I don't get, I don't even consider myself as UK dancehall. Tug of War is dancehall worldwide. Tug of War is an international dancehall artist. Yes. Not just a UK dancehall. I'm UK based, yeah, growing up in Hackney, whatever. But I'm an international, my career started in Jamaica, as you know. Yeah. Uh, my first records came out from the other side of the world. I'm an international dancehall artist. I'm an exception. But the UK dancehall scene, which I have to acknowledge because I'm here and I'm a dancehall artist. It's poor, with the support, like, the support it's, from it's very, it's very segregated, it's small, it's very small, and it's very segregated, and there's a lot of bad vibes in it, like, everybody, every, you got, you got this, in that corner is a crew, in that corner is a crew, and in that corner is a crew, none of these crew want to help each other, I like me, I did. Mm-hmm. none of them want to help each other, so in this crew, come with DJs, and the DJs, and at the end of the day, when it comes to us getting played by the UK dancehall DJs, they just fuck us off totally and play Alkaline and Mavado and Jamaican artists. Okay. Or Jamaican, not even Jamaican artists, Jamaican based artists rather than UK based artists. There's a lot of UK dancehall artists that are Jamaicans. They're just based over here. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, it's still it's the same thing. So the whole scene over here, and I think at one point it was, it was a bit better going back to like the days of Stratford Rex. Mm-hmm. The UK dancehall scene, we could pull a crowd. We used to pull thousands of people every week, and they used to come out to see UK dancehall acts. Mm-hmm. You know, we had at that we we had a, a moment where it was looking really good for us. We was up there with hip. We was just underneath hip hop over here at one point, mm-hmm. and then I don't know what went wrong. It all went pear shaped, and don't blame me for this and everyone. <laughs> so it's like it all went pear shaped. Like, and I think that's with the segregation, everyone trying to be the big man. Everyone wants to be, the, like, there's no unity, basically. In UK dancehall, there is zero unity. There is more in the grime. That's why the grime artists doing so great. Hip-hop artists, gigs and them, they're doing so great. UK dancehall, zero unity. Zero. Absolutely zero. You know, I think it's poor. And I, I mentioned it to you. I know you don't play the UK dancehall. <coughs> I know you know specialize in that genre. I know you're around it, and I know you're a DJ, so you're supposed to keep up to affairs in every genre, even if you don't play. I'm sure you still, as a DJ and a lover of music, still kind of watch Wagwan in that you know, scene. You know what? I get I get a lot of look. I get a lot of um, UK dancehall artists. Hit me up to send me music and all that kind of stuff because of the station that I'm yeah. on. We play the radio station that I'm on. We play a lot of R and B, hip hop, a lot of UK, a lot yeah. of Bashman, a lot of dancehall, a lot of reggae. Yeah, everything. Co- but you've been you've been on that yeah, all I, your life, I, haven't I, you? I see, I see, I see the DJs. Yeah. Um, I listen to my radio station colleagues mm. of what they play and stuff. But mm. me personally, as a UK DJ, a lot of people like like yourself. You know, I should cover more aspects of the UK scene and the culture and the genre. I ain't trying to blame you for anything. No, 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 but what I'm saying, like, as a DJ, I think, yeah. you know, someone that reps, represents UK, like, dancehall, reggae, bashman, and grime, hip-hop. But do you know what? Carry, Go I, ahead, because the I UK do dancehall don't I, like, I, 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 I have to big up, that's why I big up DJ Piddy. Yeah. Because he supports. That's good. You know what I mean? And there is... 
exceptions who support. Yeah. There is other DJs who support. Mm-hmm. Sir Venom support. There's other. Yeah. There's, there is. There is. No, I'm not saying the whole people don't support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you yeah. know, you have some radio station now play a tune either. Yes. No. You're right. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's the radio. It's, sometimes it's the whole radio station fighting against the whole situation as well. Yeah. You know. <coughs> so but, but, but for the question, mm. um, does UK dancehall hold any? Does it hold weight? Is it is it relevant? Weight? Is it relevant? I, like, like I said, I'm not from that mm. industry. Mm. I love music, mm. but um, but from what I've seen in the places that I've been, there's a lot of there's a lot of great talent. There's a lot yeah. of great music out there, yeah. and it needs to be exposed. So out to the DJs that. Love UK dancehall music, you yeah. know. Keep supporting what you're doing and support local talent, support great artists, yeah. and do what you can to support the culture. Yeah, definitely. So, no, I respect you. All right, moving on. Last topic. The last topic is different strains of cannabis affecting people different ways. Now, I know you're not a I'm weed a, smoker. I don't smoke. Do you have any knowledge on this, on cannabis, no. or, or the strains that's going on? Well, basically, I have to shed some light on it, because I think it's a message that we have to send to the kids. <laughs> it's an anti-drug message, we basically. <laughs> because cannabis is a very popular, popularly, popular used herb. And there's different strains. The kids, now you're playing music that promotes it whether you smoke it or not. You play music that promotes it. And you play music that promotes skunk and different strains of skunk. Yeah. These skunks, some of them... I disagree with that. You disagree with what? That the music that I play wow. yeah. represents drugs. <laughs> well, it does. You play hip-hop. Modern hip-hop... Is, 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 it, it, play, well, you can't say know. that. You play urban music. You play black music. How do I play drug music? It's not drug music. Ganja. I said ganja. ganja. The only ganja record I play is you yours. <laughs> ganja no, but you album. can't tell me say yeah. you ain't got you that you you play hip hop. People talk about weed. People talk about popping Molly. Like people talk about this. Even fucking Miley Cyrus is popping Molly on fucking track. I don't play Miley Cyrus. Like, but I'm just saying. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm glad you don't play, I don't don't play play Miley Cyrus either. I don't, don't but I'm just saying to you that music in general, you can't tell me music in general has been promoting fucking drugs from day one. (laughs) Alright, name me a record that I play on radio. Whitney, who? Name me a record that I play on radio that supports drugs. Just name me one record. That I, play. I ain't listened to your show recently. You <laughs> think that's not me? But you, me, and you put out the biggest weed song ever. We no, put out that's no, me. No, 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 no. You a, played every week, bro. Uh, a weed listen, song, bro. Uh, you man, played that every listen, week, man. Listen, that's he played me. a weed song every week, and he said we don't support weed songs. <laughs> uh, bro, go, 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 go. listen to me. That record. Uh, if you listen to the version I play, it was clean. What kind of clean? I've never seen a clean dungeon record. <laughs> see, no, you see, you're trying to get your way out of it because you're a family man. You ain't getting out of it. Come on, man, don't kill me. No, 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 you, no, it ain't killing you. It's real shit. It's a reality topic. Like, you can't go for everything and run from this topic. <laughs> like, you're, I know you don't smoke weed. Can we congratulate DJ Ramsey for yes. not smoking? Yeah. Non smoker. I congratulate that. Like, I don't, I don't good. Smoke. I don't you smoke. don't smoke at all. That's good. I congratulate that, I salute that. That's good, I appreciate that. My point is that the that the music nowadays is from since day one it promotes cannabis. The latest the, the latest strains of cannabis is affecting the kids because they've got very strong strains that it's not like once upon a time where they had just normal weed. There's some crazy weed out there now. What, what are you that, smoking that? What are you smoking? Me, I smoke in high grade, Jamaican mm-hmm. weed, natural weed. What's what, that, what, does, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it's, it's, organic. From, it's, it's organic. Okay. It's just like buying tomatoes. And you got the same smoking tomatoes? Nice. No, nice. I don't smoke tomatoes. No. Salona <laughs> Mama! Give me the bucket. Listen. Well, like, you're not putting her over there in the coffee. Listen, like, we're keeping it real. Like, you know, yeah. I know, like, Tango was, turn around and says, like, Hello. 
I'm a family man. I don't really yeah. drink. I don't really smoke. But yes, yeah, like, we keep it real. We keep it 100. We know what's going on out here. And yeah. No problem. When no it problem. comes when it comes to the music and when it comes to the culture, we know what goes on on no, the streets. It's all good. Come, 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 come through. Come. Like, seriously, it's we keep it 100 out here. Yeah. You know, no, the DJ so you can trust. Bang. Yeah, yeah. That, that's easy. That's easy. That's easy. DJ Memzy, original, original DJ Memzy. Some girl I put like donkey, hyena, and turtle, and some girl I put like donkey out of Shrek. <laughs> this is the Narcos Coffee Podcast. We're gonna wrap it up right now. I wanna say big up to DJ Memzy inside the place. Have you enjoyed the coffee, my sir? I tell you one thing, my friend. This coffee, I think we, yeah. need, to, we need to get another one done. And we're gonna have another, another little coffee. Okay. Off camera. Of course, the tea's nice, the biscuits, what you Everything doing? beautiful. Add Thank you, big up Mama War, for Thank the biscuits you. and the cakes. It's the Narcos Coffee Podcast. We're gonna have different guests up here every week. Big up everyone for locking on. Click on the subscribe button. We're gonna have a PayPal link at the bottom. You can donate to the show also to keep the thing going. Also, anybody that wants to advertise any products or any of their merchandise. Holler at me at Tug of War at T U G G A W A R. So, anyone who wants to endorse or sponsor the show in any kind of way, I'm just gonna, holler I'm, at I'm, me. I'm, I'm going to get a banner for you. I'm, yeah. I'm going to get a banner. Ah, right respect. There. Nice. And it's gonna we need be that. Like get, get a logo done. Yeah. And we'll put the logo. Wicked. I'll put my Shooters Media. Oh, yeah, talking yeah. about Shooters Media as well. Shooters Media. Uh, it's, it's, it's a new um, um, company that's approached me as a DJ, like, mm. like we was just mentioned in the interview. Um, in, in the podcast, <coughs> mm. artists always need platforms, mm. and it's costing them so much money to film and edit and put a platform out together. So, like, I've kind of created my own platform for a couple of years. It's entitled Urban History X. Urban is the the culture that I represent, the music, the the music that I believe in is the urban scene. The H is the history behind the artists. Uh, the culture, the music, the production, it goes into an X meets the spot. So it's Urban History X. Mm. Follow it up on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. Mm. And I've kind of merged my own platform with a company entitled Shooters Media UK, yeah. where they're shooting high quality music videos for okay. a very cheap price. Mm. Instead of spending like £800, £600 for a production, and you're on set, they do everything for you. So, and the prices are very cheap. They're starting off to help the culture and up and coming UK artists or even music producers, um, events, organizations and stuff. So I'm gonna be the face behind um, supporting the movement for the culture for this year as well. So make sure you follow them on all social networks as well. They're on three major platforms, Twitter, they're on Instagram, and YouTube as well. So make sure you follow Shooters Media UK on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube as well. And they will follow you back. Mm. Anyone that wants to work with them, trust me, they're out tonight. They're in uh, Islington. After this, I'm going straight down to Islington, Islington Assembly to interview Knotts, uh, Young Bane, and Ale Beats as well. They're all going to be there as well. So I'll be the face. They'll be the camera in shooting it. So big shouts out to Shooters Media as well. And yeah, man, Mystic Radio, each and every Saturday from the hours of four to eight, playing the best in UK music. And watch out for my brand new EP, um, entitled Who Is Original Menzi, going to be dropping very, very soon, hopefully with God's blessing this year. The first single's out already. Uh, the second single's entitled Let Me Live. Uh, it's produced by A.O. Beats, my in-house producer. <coughs> we got A.O. Beats. And um, it's featuring Otis, uh, Shocker, Archer, and... The platinum selling artist Chrome, he had the record with Dizzy Rascal on holiday and with mm. Calvin Harris. Big up Chrome for being the hook man and the artist on that project as well. The video's coming out soon. Watch nice out for Let Me Live. Check that out, man. Also, you done know my latest project. Yay! Out now on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, triple album. I had to please you guys with three albums at once because I got dancehall fans. I've got UK hip hop fans, I've got grime fans, I've got hip hop fans in the United States, trap fans all around the world. We've also got like 
you know, that hardcore original hip hop sound. So we got three different albums we dropped. <laughs> Dancehall edition, grime and trap edition, and also the hip hop edition. So check it out, it's on iTunes right now. Click the link on my Instagram profile, listen to it on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, new music videos out now also. It's been a pleasure having you, Mr. Memzi. Respect, my brother. Thank all you. the best with all of your new projects and your record label and everything and prosperity Ooh. to you and your family Thank for 2018. You. This is the Narcos Coffee Podcast. My name is Tago Go suck on the mama! Yang, yang.